The astronomers using NASA's uh, actual uh, orbiting space telescope and the supercomputer today announced that they found uh, the first two Earth-sized planets orbiting another star. Now, if you're an astronomer, this is a big deal. If you're someone who's just interested in life in the universe, this is also a very, very big deal because uh, the size of the planet matters for two reasons. One, it means that these are places that have uh, are small enough to have the kind of gravity and the kind of rocky, solid uh, composition that Earth uh, has makes it a nice, uh, comfortable place for us carbon-based life forms. Right. And um, uh, secondly, it means that this telescope, which cost the taxpayers $600 million, can actually do what it was designed to do. It can see objects a thousand light years away that are that small. Can they tell if there is, li there is life form on this planet? Can these telescopes tell that, or do we not have a sense of that? Uh, absolutely not. Um, they haven't got a clue even of what the mass of these planets are. Um, and without actually knowing that, you can really only guess about their composition. So and no that's where the supercomputers came in. They really needed to do a lot of very high order statistical crunching to tease these signals out. So there's, there's no uh, guarantee that they have a Kepler 20E version of MTV, right? We don't know that yet. <laughs> Here's my question for you. Uh, this is, I mean, they didn't just happen to find these planets. This is part of a larger project to yeah. discover these kind of Earth-like planets, right? Right. Since 2009, uh, NASA, uh, well, that's when they orbited the Kepler, and they've been systematically uh, surveying a cluster of 150,000 stars uh, continuously looking for the little dips in light that occur when something, maybe another star, maybe a planet, maybe just a cloud of dust, passes in front of the star. And that's their indicator. Now, they have to watch a lot of these, what they call transitions, they're eclipses, really, right. um, to be able to determine that the object that's causing this is indeed a planet. Um, they have, I think, another year or two to go, uh, and then they're hoping to extend the mission for another three or four years. The, telescope uh, as these things are and is they behaving do have, well. I mean, they have a lot of candidates. Right. There's, there's, so, there's like possibly 10 possible habitable Earth-like planets they're watching? Well, these are candidates. I mean, the vocabulary here gets pretty squirrely pretty yeah. quickly. Um, they have found so far what they would call the 2,000 or more planet candidates. That means they have signals that are looking pretty good. But remember, you're not looking at something optically. This is all uh, it's extrapolated, well, basically. It's extrapolated from kind of uh, static in right. a way. I mean, not literally, but that'll do. Um, and then of these, uh, about 48 actually are orbiting their stars if, in fact, they are planets, which we don't know yet. They're orbiting their stars in that zone where it's warm enough for water to be liquid. Right, the, the and for us, zone, conventional right? carbon-based life forms, I know you don't think of yourself that way, <laughs> but we need water as a precondition for our existence. Right. So that's a big indicator for NASA in their search. And I mean, you know, where, where, where what's the go? next step right. from this? Okay, so they have another year where they're going to complete this cataloging. Do we start sending hello messages <laughs> well, after that and hope we get something you know, back? We've, we've, been, we've been sending things, you know, when we broadcast, you know, radio mm -hmm. broadcast, television, those things go out into the universe. We've been saying hello since, uh, I don't know, it's the early 1950s. We are the peeping toms of the universe. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to continue Good to point. stare out there. Um, I know NASA has other, you know, expensive telescopes they'd like to orbit to narrow the search because at a certain point you're going to hit the, just the resolution technically of what you can see at a distance. These things are very, very far away. I mean, we'll never in our lifetimes uh, be able to launch missions to them. And in a way it's kind of uh, distressing, I guess. You know, here we are, finally we've got the capability to learn we may not whether or not we're alone in the universe, who knows, but we've got places to visit, you know, and we can't get there with the technology that we have now.